Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Aaron Morelli and I'm the Manager of International Admissions and Recruitment here at Duquesne University in the Center for Global Engagement. And we're joined today by Casey Foote, the Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions in the Palumbo Donahue School of Business. Um, today we'll be going over several business programs within the School of Business and Fall 2021. Um, so please, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat box or unmute yourself to ask us directly. Um, we'll have a quick presentation and then really the floor is open for questions and answers. And Casey, if you wouldn't mind getting started. Sure. Share my screen with you. Can you, can you see that? No, now we can, yeah. Okay. Um, so the Paloma Donahue School of Business um, houses all of our graduate business programs. Um, including the, um, you know, MS AIM, MBAs, all the specialized masters, accountancy, um, et cetera. So I'll be going over just a quick overview of all of our programs that we offer. And like Aaron said, if you have any questions about um, what I go over at the end, I'd be happy to answer them. So here is a um, just a list of our graduate business staff that you would be working with within the School of Business. Um, you've probably been in touch with most of us at this point. Karen Donovan, who's our Associate Dean, she also teaches in the MBA programs. Um, you know, she's a go-to person for any questions that you have about school, about, um, you know, classes, things like that. Becky Ligman, who said, Arthur, you probably already got um, an email from just talking about registering for classes. She's going to be your academic advisor for the programs, for all of our programs, actually. So she'll tell you how to set up your multi-pass, how to log into Blackboard, the courses that you can um, register for, and any troubleshooting you have while you are a student here. John and Christine Hughes work in our um, service development department for students. So John works with corporations and he makes those connections with these companies um, in local areas as well as nationally in order to best serve our students. So um, he makes these connections in order to get jobs for our students, in order for us to have connections as far as doing projects um, and um, also, there are experiential learning projects too that are happening. Christine will be your career guide person um, when you come. So if you have questions about your resume, um, if you're looking for a specific job or are applying to jobs, she can help you kind of tweak your, your documents and make you ready for those interviews um, once you get them. She also teaches the practicums in the MBA Sustainable Business Practice Program. So she'll be able to kind of be a guide while you're in that program, but also a guide to all students while you're uh, making your next career step. Chris Breuer, you have probably also talked to, he's our Director of Graduate Admissions. He typically handles the MBA programs um, as well as the micro-credential program. So, um, you know, he's very well informed about all of our programs and, you know, knows a lot of just kind of quirky facts. So if you just want to have a chat with him, um, feel free to do that. And then Christine Wadowski, um, she is our graduate student support specialist. So she handles helping us with all of our um, document and application preparation. She helps get transcripts uploaded. She will make sure that you have everything ready for your application in order to be reviewed, as well as just handling um, you know, all of our day-to-day -day, um, activities. So she makes sure the office keeps going. So we are AACSB accredited. We are um, less than 5% of the business schools worldwide, <clears throat> excuse me, that have this accreditation. And this is important because there are specific requirements that go along with um, being AACSB accredited. So you have to have so many full-time faculty students, you have to have so many um, faculty to student, a certain faculty to student ratio. We have to have very rigorous curriculums 
there are a lot of things that go into the accred accreditation for schools like this. Um, it takes about, it happens every five years. So we have to keep all of our curriculum, our staff, uh, our programs and our students up to date uh, with this accreditation in order to maintain it. We are also PRME, which is um, the Principles for Responsible Management Education. As you can see, we have um, tons of rankings and recognition. Our MBA Sustainable Business Practices just became fourth, our fourth in the world and number one in the US this year. We're also number four in the best value school in Pennsylvania, number 158 in the United States for the US News and World Report rankings. Our MSM, which is completely 100% online program, is in the top 100, also by US News and World Report. So you're thinking, you know, I get a graduate business degree, you're already kind of in that mindset, Siddharth, you're already, you know, accepted to a program, so you've already made that choice. But for other students, you know, you've already have your bachelor's degree, you may have another master's degree, but why get another one or continue on to a graduate business degree? So 89% of companies plan to hire MBAs or MS specialized graduates in 2021. Um, the median starting salary for our MBA graduates is 60% higher than a bachelor's degree with just a typical master's business administration. So that again is a national uh, salary range that you're seeing um, and only for the MBA, but we can go into the specialized master's programs if you like a little later. All right, so what can Duquesne do for you? Uh, we pride ourselves on being interactive and having this experiential learning environment. And what that means is we're not just doing lectures and you won't just be a number within a class. You're actually having that interactive feature with students, with your faculty, um, doing projects, doing hands-on learning, and then what you learn in the classroom can be applicable to jobs that you may have at the current time or a job that you have in the future. We have state-of-the-art facilities, including seven business institutes of centers of excellence. Um, I know that the fourth floor, the fifth floor, and the sixth floor just got renovated. So we have new labs, we have new um, technology. There are several um, you know, platforms where students can just expand their learning um, horizons using those features. Like I said before, we do have small class sizes. So we have a 23 to one student faculty ratio. Although in um, you know, the specialized master's programs such as AIM, MAC and supply chain, you're definitely going to have a smaller class size even than that. So you're looking typically around you know, 10 to 15 students in a class. Um, besides that, we have a world-renowned faculty. You can take a look at our um, the faculty that we do have on staff. Most of them are full-time faculty members here. We do have some adjuncts, but we, um, along with the accreditation, have to maintain a certain full-time faculty ratio as well. So once you're done with our graduate programs, um, or even during, we have an amazing alumni connection network where you can. Um, you know, network with them in different companies, in different jobs. You um, have just this connection after you graduate. So whenever you're looking for a different job, you can connect with them. They come in to speak on panels um, throughout the year, especially in the career development workshops and executive insights programs and classes. So you'll definitely get some feedback from the alumni. So quickly, I'm just gonna to touch base on the programs that will be applicable to international students. It would be our MBA programs. Um, there's the full-time professional MBA program, which is in the evening and or online. And then we have our MBA Sustainable Business Practices, which is an accelerated daytime program that starts in the summer. So that is only three semesters long, summer, fall, and spring. 
Our specialized MS programs include the um, MS Accountancy, Analytics and Information Management, so Supply Chain Management, as well as our Management Program, which is 100% online. And I've only included that program because you can, if you decide to stay in your home country, you're allowed to complete this program, you know, while you're where you're at home, wherever you are. We do also offer certificate programs in analytics and information management, entrepreneurship, and supply chain management. As an international student um, on an F1 visa, you, I believe you'd be eligible for these um, certificate programs, um, but we would just want to check with the international office just to make sure, but you definitely are eligible. Go ahead, Aaron, sorry. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to add, as long as this, you are maintaining at least six credits, um, you're eligible for your F-1 visa with any of these programs. And just to note on some of the online options too, if you are staying at home, um, there is a little difference with your visa situation. So if you are 100% online, you are not eligible for an F-1 visa, but if you're enrolled hybrid or somewhat in person, um, that's what gives you the F-1 visa eligibility. Um, and with the STEM designations within analytics and information management and supply chain management, um, you must be in the United States physically. Um, but we can talk at the end of this more about COVID-19 and the situation around the world with international students. But I'll let you continue, Casey. Thanks for that clarification. Sorry. Um, you can also add certificate stacks onto your programs. So, um, you know, the professional MBA program, you can add on an AIM certificate, an entrepreneurship certificate, supply chain. There is credit sharing. So you wouldn't actually be taking 42 credits plus, you know, 15 credits it would take to get a certificate. Um, it would actually be a little bit less depending on which courses are shared and when you decide to add this um, certificates onto your program. Um, the joint degree programs that might be applicable to international students and most of our international students who decide to do them would be an MS analytics and information along with the MBA um, or the MS in management with an MBA. So our professional MBA program, we have immediate application in the workplace. This is typically for students who are already working and um, you know, want to further their, their career, want to kind of take that next step. So what you learn in the classroom will definitely be applicable to, the, um, to your job right away. You can complete this program in as little as four semesters. That would be like a full-time track. So that is taking nine credits each semester. Um, and then if you are waived from any of our fundamental courses, which is six credits, then it could take even less. The courses are offered only in the evening if you come to take them on campus or you can take them online. This program offers starts in every single semester. So you can start in the fall, spring or summer. And it is a 42 credit program, like I said, but it could be reduced to 36 if you have, um, if you've already taken courses within the past five years in accounting, finance, um, statistics, and economics. The STEM designated option is available if you add on one of those specialized master certificates, like I mentioned before. So here are the fundamental courses. You can get waived from this if you have a B minus or better within the past five years. If you don't have these courses already, you don't have to worry, you can take these. Um, they are offered online only in an asynchronous format so you can complete them at your own pace. Um, let me see. So each, our curriculum within the professional MBA program is either going to be three credits or one and a half credits. A one and a half credit course will meet only half of the semester. And then a three credit course meets for the entire 12 to 15 weeks. Your capstone, which is at the end of the program, which basically encompasses everything that you've learned in the program up to this point. And you're kind of putting everything into um, your knowledge into, into one basket and making a project. So this capstone quote course um, 
does have synchronous requirements. So even if you are doing a 100% online option for this program, um, there still may be some times where you have to zoom in virtually at a specific time. I'm um, just gonna hit those certificates one more time. Um, you can add in the supply chain, the AIM certificate, um, the on entrepreneurship certificate to this program um, for just, you know, I think four and a half to, to nine more credits. And you'd be able to, to have your certificate along with your MBA degree. There is an international study trip um, that we typically do plan for our students as long as you know, we have the demand for it. Obviously with COVID, we're not really sure of traveling and the type of trip that we can plan for this year or for next year. Uh, but that is something that is in our program curriculum. Uh, MBA Sustainable Business Practices is a one-year accelerated program. So you're still going to get that um, MBA program feel. Um, it's just more focused on sustainability in all aspects. So you're going to do financial sustainability, uh, social sustainability, and um, economic sustainability. Um, so there are experiential consulting projects in every semester. So this is really for those students who may not have a whole lot of work experience or are planning to change careers. Um, so this will give you a real live experience um, consulting projects for either organizations within Pittsburgh or nationally and internationally. This program only starts in the summer. Um, so it's since it's an accelerated program, we wanted to make sure that you our students could graduate in May and be ready to enter the workforce um, when it's most competitive. Emerson and Countsy is um, a one-year full-time program. Typically, we do have an option to do a two-year path um, for those working professionals who want to ex extend their program a little bit longer, and they take those courses in the evening. But typically our MS students in accountancy will um, be taking this program in order to prepare for the CPA exam. Um, when you do an undergraduate degree, you typically have 120 credits and you need 150 credits to sit for the exams and to register. So this program gives you the opportunity to get those extra 30 credits, as well as the information necessary to sit for those exams and be successful. Um, it is our only, it is the only IIA certified graduate program within Pennsylvania and just 38 in um, the United States. So that's not a whole lot. If you take a look at all the graduate programs that are offered um, in the United States, and um, that basically allows us to make sure that our course curriculum is rigorous enough to make sure that you are prepared to be su successful. There are prerequisites, as you can see at the bottom, that are ne necessary to be considered for this program. Financial accounting, intermediate accounting one, auditing, ma managerial accounting, and intermediate accounting two. You must have a 3.0 in all of these prerequisite courses to be considered for the program. So analytics and information management. We offer an MS degree as well as a certificate. There are two different paths that you can take. We have a one-year path um, that starts fall, spring, and summer. Not starts, but it starts in the fall and it lasts fall, spring, and summer. And a two-year path, which is over uh, the duration of six semesters and also starts in the fall. So it is STEM designated. Um, we transform big data into actionable items. And what this means is that we're taking programs such as Python, Power BI, and R, and um, as well as some others, and we're giving you the tools to, to learn them and to apply them in a business setting. So you're transforming data into um, other data that you know can be used just company-wide and it's not just numbers or graphs but things that actually make sense to an organization as a whole. This is a 30 credit program that is a hybrid program um, but also has a 100% online asynchronous option available. 
the 15 credit hour certificate um, is also going to be hybrid or 100% um, online in an asynchronous format. The MS or Certificate in Supply Chain Management um, is similar to the analytics in that it is a 30 credit program that only starts in the fall. It is hybrid courses. So that means that um, you know how you have a mix of on-campus and online courses that you're going to be attending, as well as a 100% online asynchronous option. This program also only starts in the fall and um, typically, this program, I think, is more for um, students who want to move into that logistics or already are in that field and kind of want to move up into management or even further. Um, so you, it's not required, but it is recommended and preferred that you do have some work experience before entering this program. Where is the certificate courses? All right, MS in management. Again, this is fully online, 100%. So if you're going to be here in the United States, um, you cannot be on an F1 visa and do this program. Um, you can do it you know, in your home country. Like Erin said, it would just, well, I guess you wouldn't have a visa if you're in your home country. But if you're coming to the United States, um, you would have a different visa um, requirement for this program. It can be completed in as little as three semesters. That would be a full-time track course. Um, it is a 30 credit hour curriculum. It allows you to take what you learn in the classroom and apply it also immediately into the workplace. This program has starts in all three semesters. So you can start in fall, spring, or summer. You can also stack on your certificate in entrepreneurship um, for an extra four and a half credits. So the master's certificate in entrepreneurship, um, this is one of our newest certificates. It is a 15 credit hybrid certificate program and it helps um, those students who are looking to do startups um, or want to get into like a new business and um, kind of learn the ropes of you know, entrepreneurship and how a business runs and what it takes to run their own business so that they can move on to their, um, their own in the future. We actually don't need this because this is executive education, sorry. Um, application deadlines. Um, so as you can see, I listed the programs in the middle column and then the start term that you would want to start. So we pretty much have rolling admission deadline for all of our programs. For international students um, who are starting in the fall, um, deadlines would be July 1st. And this just allows us to get enough time to process your visa, get your I-20 and, and travel arrangements like that. Um, the 11, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 15 deadlines that you see um, for the SVP program in the middle, that's really for awards, um, merit-based scholarships, things like that. So you may be wondering what it takes to get admission to one of our programs. Um, all of this can be found online, but if you wanna take a quick look, um, the application is free. So feel free to start an application today. Um, upload your resume, CV. There are application essays, typically two, sometimes three, uh, for each program. So make sure you check out those essays and answer those prompts correctly. Uh, we don't typically just accept a, a statement of purpose or your letter of intent to start the program. Um, we like to see kind of specific answers to each of them. Two letters of recommendation. This can be professional or academic. Um, it doesn't really matter who, as long as it's not someone like you're related to or a good friend or family member. Official transcripts. Um, this one's important because a lot of international students especially um, need to, to request official transcripts. So uploading your transcript to your application portal, unfortunately, isn't going to satisfy the official transcript requirement. You'll need to contact your 
university's registrar and have them send us your official transcript directly. Um, this can be done electronically. It can be done via post. Please note though that um, for the year 2022 and moving forward, we will be requiring all international students to have the transcripts evaluated. GMAT or GRE scores. Um, for certain programs, this may be a requirement. And for international students, TOEFL, IELTS, or the dual lingual test is required unless um, you were going to be applying for a waiver. I can go over the waiver requirements on the next page. So the GMAT waiver, um, you, a lot of people ask me, how can I get a GR, GMAT or GRE waiver? You have three or more years of professional work experience. This is full-time work experience post undergraduate. Um, this excludes the MS in accountancy. Um, so they wouldn't apply for this waiver, but for all the other programs, you can apply if you have this type of work experience. If you've also graduated with 3.25 or better GPA from an AACSB accredited institution within the past 10 years, you may be able to apply for this waiver as well. Or if you've had um, graduated with 3.25 from an ABET accredited program in you know, engineering discipline, if you already have a master's degree, that would also kind of put you in that field for applying for a waiver. And then if you're applying for the MS in management, the master certificate in entrepreneurship or the micro credential, then you would not be required to um, take the GMAT or GRE. Um, so before I go over tuition, let me just quickly um, put in or just say, you know, for our international students who want to apply for a TOEFL, IELTS, uh, Duolingo waiver, during your application, you can say you want to be waived from the English proficiency requirement, and you can give us a reason. And reasons would be, you know, your, your studies were taught in English, you've already attended, you know, four years here within the US, um, you come from an English speaking country, things like that. I can send you, um, or Aaron can send you a link um, that links back to the uh, Center for Global Engagement on the criteria in order to be waived for that waiver. Um, but that is an option for you as well. Now for tuition, I just kind of listed the tuition prices and this is for the academic year 2020, 2020, no, 2021, 2022 year for each program. So as you can see, professional MBA is 1363, but as long as you're taking six credits, which all international students take when they're here, you get that uh, tuition reduction up to um, down to 1022 per credit. The master's, specialized master's programs, including accountancy, management, analytics, supply chain, that's already at a reduced uh, right price for our students. So it's currently at $1,011 per credit. They are subject to change each academic year. You typically see about a 2%, uh, give or take, increase starting in the fall. And then funding opportunities. Um, Merit-based Opportunities for full-time students, um, that's taking six or more credits, as long as you are not working elsewhere. Um, you know, they have scholarships for the SBP program that typically range from four to 9,000. They also offer fellowships, which is research-based um, from 9,000 to 20,000. You have to take the GMAT or GRE to be considered for that. Graduate assistantships. Um, that's for all of our programs except for the MSM program and our certificate programs. Uh, this would cover 4.5 to 9 credits each semester. So, in order to be considered for that, you would need a completed application, um, a GMAT or GRE, and or um, a 3.5 GPA if you were away from that GMAT or GRE. So the deadlines to be considered, we have round one that's already passed, that would be January 15th, uh, where we have already do interviews and we've already awarded some of our um, GA positions. And then round two, we are going to be starting within the next couple of weeks. So if you're looking to be on that list, um, 
just let me know. I can make sure that that is on your application and that we pull you to um, make sure that you are considered for this opportunity. And then here is my information in case anybody has any questions. Um, so I'm gonna pass it back over to Erin um, and then our students to see if there are any questions. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Casey. That was a lot of helpful information. Um, the only things I wanted to add um, would really be about the STEM designations for some of our programs, in, our specialized master's programs or those certificate options for the MBA. Um, this is really what gives you that opportunity to extend your OPT and CPT while in the United States by an additional 24 months. So specifically when the, within the School of Business, this is a great opportunity to get your degree, get an internship while you're working, and then also work an additional two years while studying in the United States. Um, and as with the option of tagging that onto the MBA, uh, I think those are both very, very great options. Um, but we just wanted to touch base on, and Casey, I had a, a kind of question for you. Uh, I know a lot of our programs are offered either 100% online or offered hybrid. Um, right now, with, specifically within India, there's a very high surge of COVID-19 cases and visa appointments are extremely limited. Um, so would students have an option to say, start online and arrive late mid semester? or do they have any flexibility, say if they couldn't get here by August 23rd? So I know last year, um, we definitely did have that option. We've had several students who started online and were able to, or if their MSC opened up for visa appointments or they were able to, to get um, access to that and travel to the US, they, they came you know, when they were able to, and then we incorporated them into um, the hybrid face-to-face -face and online models. Now for this year, um, we're not going to be doing the high flex option as of right now for students, but I believe that there's still going to be an option for those international students to start online. Um, Cause we know that that's going to be backed up. We know COVID's still kind of an issue for all of our students over there. Um, so I believe we're willing to work with our students to make sure that they, you know, start the program and then when they're ready and they're able to, um, you know, they can get those visas and come over, whether that's, you know, in the fall semester or maybe they start even in the spring semester. Hmm. Okay, and I mean, we can work. So if you have any questions, I mean, please reach out to us directly um, as we get closer to visa dates. Because um, I know Siddharth, you've already scheduled your appointment, but it might have already been canceled. But um, please just keep us in the loop, and if there's anything we can do to help, um, definitely let us know. Um, but really, this is now an opportunity to ask questions. So does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask, either about immigration, about admissions, or about your program specifically here at Duquesne? All right, um, well, if there aren't any questions, um, I think we'll wrap up in just another minute. Um, thank you again so much, Casey, for all of this information. Um, your contact ad information is up on the screen right now, um, and you can email us at internationaladmissions at duq.edu um, or email me directly at morellia1 at duq.edu. Um, and thank you for joining us today, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for having me, Erin. Siddharth, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions before you start. All right. Also, I have uh, mentioned a question in the chat box. If you could just you know, respond to it, it would be really helpful. Let me stop sharing. Yeah, so I can answer this question, Casey. The question is, if I start my courses online, would my CPT eligibility get altered? Um, yes, so the one requirement, and this is also with a very recent update from um, the immigration department, well, immigration in the United States, um, to be eligible for your CPT and complete the one academic year, um, you do have to be present in the United States. So your eligibility begins the day you arrive in the United States and begin your academic courses. Um, and you must complete a full academic year before you're able to utilize the CPT um, work opportunities. So if you do begin online, you do not have that option. 
um, students who have already begun online before March 2020 are still able to be considered for CPT. Um, but we do need you here physically in the United States taking hybrid or in-person classes for your CPT eligibility. All right. Also, uh, are we allowed to intern? Suppose they're eligible for the CPT. Are students allowed to intern while they are studying? Yep. Um, just make sure to work with the Center for Global Engagement closely. Um, and we really recommend starting looking for internships, um, maybe right when you arrive, at least within our other programs. Casey, do you recommend students looking for internships during their first semester, or is it better to wait a semester? Um, I think it depends on the, the course path that um, you choose. A lot of our international students are now choosing the two-year path. So, you know, starting to look for internship opportunities right away is actually more probable um, for those students on the one year path since they're kind of diving into uh, a program that has four or five courses each semester. Um, you may want to wait until at least you have one semester under your belt so you can uh, learn your balancing act of work, uh, life and school. Yeah, so I mean, as you're looking, just keep the Center for Global Engagement in the loop, because um, we do need to issue a work authorization form um, for your internship, even if it's paid or unpaid. Um, and we have a lot of webinars coming up soon with um, our immigration advisor, Mary Beth Morris, who can answer a lot of these questions as well. Um, but we do just recommend keep us in the loop. Let us know if you have a job offer um, and we'll help prepare all of your options and get you situated in the United States to work legally. All right. Uh, one last question, if you don't mind. Mm. One last question, if you don't mind. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, sorry, am I audible? I'm sorry. I think there was a network glitch at my end. Okay, we can hear you now. Yeah, I actually myself have opted for the two year path. Uh, for the MS in analytics and information program. And uh, last year I had actually deferred my admission and uh, I had got the format for the two years as in which subjects would be a part of which semester. Is that going to change from this year onwards or it's going to be the same? So you already, so you got your course path last year for which courses will be offered each semester. Did you get one this year, like an updated one? No, I haven't got the updated one yet. Okay, um, it, it is updated, um, it would switch. So, you know, last year, if you were taking certain courses in the fall um, and the spring semester, they would typically alternate um, to the other two courses since I can send you, um, let me send you, the course curriculum guide that will kind of show you which courses you would be taking. Um, have you heard from Becky Legman yet? Oh, I haven't heard from her over the updated schedule. Okay, so I will um, also connect you with her to just to make sure that that information, it should be available on Blackboard, but we want to make sure that uh, the process for you is as seamless as possible. So I'll connect you with her to make sure that we um, get you your course schedule and curriculum. All right, that would be really helpful. Okay, well, do you have any other questions that we can help answer? No, no, none as of now. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, and if you have any questions, again, feel free to email, chat us, um, or get in contact with, us, contact with us directly. Sure. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Bye.